What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to talk about a movie that I saw some early reviews of when it was screening at some different film festivals and I was really interested into this one specifically because it was starring Rebecca Hall who I think is one of the best working actresses right now. She was in a film last year called The Night House that I really enjoyed. It wasn't a perfect movie but it was really great and her performance kind of elevated it to an entirely different level for me and this film turned out to be a incredible. I saw some middle of the road reviews and I'm not sure if it's just because this movie is really catered to my interests of like diving into the human psychology and all of these really interesting facets of humanity that are explored throughout this film but I really enjoyed this and the movie I'm going to be talking about today is called Resurrection. Resurrection is directed by Andrew Siemens. A woman's carefully constructed life is upended when an unwelcome shadow from her past returns forcing her to confront the monster she She's evaded for two decades. So I saw a couple of people in reviews compare this to the 1981 film Possession, which is one of my favorite movies of all time, and I can see glimpses of that through this film, especially through Rebecca Hall's performance. This is probably my favorite performance of the year so far, next to Kei Hui Kwan's performance in Everything Everywhere All at Once. This performance is so dedicated and incredible that Rebecca Hall just really kind of immerses herself into this performance in a way that captivates you as the viewer to any time she's giving like one of these really long monologues or anytime there's a close-up on her facial expression, the way she's able to shift her emotions and kind of build your tension as a viewer, it's just amazing. So in short, the film is Rebecca Hall plays Margaret, who is this successful woman living in New York City. She's made a name for herself at this company. She works for like the human resources department and she lives at home with her young daughter, Abby. And the two of them seem to have a pretty decent relationship. She's a teenager, so she's constantly like playing video games and kind of pushing her to the back burner and she shows a little bit of signs of being an overprotective parent but not really anything like too off-putting at the beginning of the film just kind of comes across as like a hey let your kid live a little bit more and we're not really sure as to why she's so overprotective she's having a fling with this guy that she works with at her office who's married and has kids and you're introduced to some of the people that work in the office. The movie starts off with her having this interview with this young woman who's clearly talking about uh, being taken advantage of by this guy and that he's treating her horribly and she's, Rebecca Hall's kind of giving her advice as to how to overcome that. So the film starts off and it's really just kind of introducing you to these characters and getting you in this world. And then one day, Rebecca Hall has to go to this conference for work and she's sitting in the, the conference hall and she looks across the hall and she sees Tim Roth's character, David, sitting in the front of there. And she kind of just loses her mind. She melts down. You have no idea who this person is. She just completely melts down and runs out of the building. She ends up seeing him again when she's at a store with her daughter and she ends up seeing him again when she's out at this park. And when she's out at this park, she finally decides to go confront him. And he first acts like he doesn't know her, then he starts revealing really intimate details about her life and he walks off. And so immediately you're kind of put in this really uncomfortable scenario. And what the film is without giving away too many spoilers is you find out that he has been a pivotal part of Becca Hall's early life and that he's kind of manipulated her and treated her really terribly and it kind of looks at this idea of toxic relationships and having a controlling partner in like the most extreme sense imaginable. This movie kind of takes the extremism in it to the next level in the best way possible. And I saw a lot of people comparing this to this is what Alex Garland wishes that he could have done with men. And I agree, there's a lot of similarities in that concept of like this idea of toxic masculinity controlling in relationships, but it's done in a much more nuanced fashion. There's this scene where when you're given information about Tim Roth's character, David, uh, Rebecca Hall is talking to one of the women that she works with in the office who she's writing a recommendation letter for and she gives this like eight minute monologue that's kind of like the exposition dump of telling you who this guy was in her life and it's just like soul shaking it is one of the best deliveries of a monologue i've seen in quite some time rebecca hall is just so committed to this performance and she starts to get more overprotective of her daughter which really creates this tension in the relationship between the two of them to where she starts 
asking other people outside for help for her mom. And it's sort of Rebecca Hall's slow mental decline and then watching how Tim Roth slowly starts to put himself back into her life in ways that he's able to control her the way that he was used to be able to control her. And it's really just kind of eye-opening to how much a controlling, psychologically manipulative person can instill themselves back in your life in a way that they can really just kind of take control again. And the performances are really what do that. And Rebecca Hall really is this whole film. She steals the show. This takes a really wild turn in the third act. It gets a little like surreal, but not in like an overwhelming way where you're like, oh my God, like men where it had that crazy third act sequence that I do respect. I liked that. But this was much more subdued in a way that made sense to where all the themes of the film kind Kind of came together at the end and it really shows like I said that abusive relationship but it also shows the relationship of parent and child and how sometimes parents could be really overprotective and think they're doing what's best for their child when in turn they're just hurting their relationship with their child even if they think that what they're doing is in their best interest and I liked that dichotomy of themes that's going on in this movie and it really was just fantastic I'm not sure what a lot of people's qualms with this are other than they might have an issue with the pain Pacing, but it's a slow paced film that spends all of its time building up its characters and it's really an intimate character drama that is incredibly suspenseful and it definitely has made my top films of the year list. I'm not 100% sure where it falls yet, but it is just phenomenal. This is one of those things, like I said, with Possession from 1981, what I respect so much about that film is Isabella Johnny's performance and uh, how everything is in her facial expressions and how she shifts her facial expressions. and how she delivers these lines of dialogue in such like a beautiful emotive way and that's really what Rebecca Hall reminded me of I don't think it's as great of a performance as Isabella Johnny's but it is a fantastic performance and I think everyone should check out this movie if just for Rebecca Hall's performance alone so have you seen Resurrection did you love it did you hate it leave me a comment down below and let me know what you thought I thought this movie was brilliant I thought the themes explored were fascinating and that it was just really incredibly done as always if you can like the video and subscribe to the channel it helps me out a lot and lets me know the type of content you're looking for. I'm always putting out new material and look forward to putting more out for you in the near future. And also, recently I started uploading short little review blurbs on TikTok under Nate's Film Reviews. If you want to head over there and follow me, you can check out some quick little five film recommendation lists that I'm doing. I've been really enjoying it and had a good interaction with people on the site so far. And as always, everyone, thank you so much for watching and have a great rest of your day.